Prayer is a tremendous blessing from God for us as Christians, and it's a tremendous blessing for us as Christians that we can bless others with. The purpose of this prayer app is to leverage technology to better help Christians grow in their prayer life and our churches to grow in prayer-based ministry. Our prayer app is web-based as well as mobile-based because not everybody has a smartphone. Our web-based app is available at www.iprayu.org. Our mobile version of iPrayU is available for Apple and Android products. By leveraging modern technology, your prayer ministry is accessible 24-7, and the work that you're doing to serve those we are praying for is visible to members. In this video, we're going to look at the prayer coordinator's role in the I Pray You app. So first of all, you're going to go to iprayu.org and log in. And then you're going to go down to the prayer partners button and click on enter as a prayer coordinator. You're one of the prayer partners. And then the screen's going to load up and you're going to use your email and your password. Um, when you are first signed up, your pastor or another prayer coordinator uh, brought you onto the prayer ministry team and assigned you a password. Once you log in the very first time, you can change your password. So we're gonna log in as a uh, prayer coordinator uh, connected with an actual uh, prayer ministry database for an outreach that we are doing in Newark to help our uh, congregation there in Newark, New Jersey. And so then uh, you log in and click on the home button. And the first time that you log in as a prayer coordinator, the first thing you want to do is click on the Me button and make sure all your information is updated. Now, one of the fun things that you can do is you can uh, put a picture of yourself into the prayer ministry database for your church. And to do that, it's real simple. Just copy and paste the URL for your picture. So, for example, if you use uh, Facebook, um, you have a picture on Facebook that you like. There's a picture of my family uh, and myself um, uh, in New York City uh, on top of uh, one of the, the skyscrapers there um, looking down over Central Park. <clears throat> and so that's kind of a cool picture. So if that's a picture I want to use, then I just uh, copy the uh, URL address. I click on that and click Paste put the URL address in there. Then I want to make sure that my name is correct. Uh, this is the name of actually one of our uh, members uh, there in Newark uh, who serves as a prayer coordinator. Uh, phone number, email, uh, your address. So, uh, for example, um, we could put the uh, address of uh, this gentleman here in Newark. And then whenever you enter any information, you always confirm your password. You can also change your password if you want to. Click Submit. And then uh, your information has been successfully submitted. And then one of the fun things you can do is you can go to the Prayer Ministry Members button, click on that. And so we're logged in as a Prayer Ministry Coordinator. That's button number five. Click on that. And uh, there's the picture we just uploaded. So that's kind of cool, right? Um, so then um, just a quick overview of the home screen here. If you want to know anything about the prayers of the church, you use the first two buttons. You want to know anything about who's doing the praying and the caring for the prayers of the church, it's the next two buttons. We have a prayer events calendar. We'll look at that. We have the church's information. We'll look at that. But I'll just real quick, give you a little peek here. Uh, one of the neat things also is uh, your pastor can upload a picture of the church. So uh, anybody who goes uh, to your prayer database to put in a prayer request uh, will see a picture of the church and uh, this information here. Uh, address, website, Facebook page, phone number, pastor's name, phone number, uh, email address. So that's pretty cool stuff. Um, so the prayers of the church. So first of all, the first button here, uh, add or see prayers to the church. Click on that button. And uh, one of the things that this prayer app is designed to do is uh, for every user, it will call out the prayers that they have volunteered to care for. So as a prayer coordinator, the prayers that you are coordinating to care for are called out for you. If you're an elder, you log in as an elder, it'll show the prayers that you are volunteering as an elder to care for. If you're an individual prayer partner, it'll call out the prayers that you're volunteering as an individual prayer partner to, to pray for. Um, so it calls them out for you and then it filters them. So here's uh, the members, here's the visitors, here's the people from the community, 
and here are others who you are uh, caring for. And uh, there's a keyword search here. So if you're looking for a particular thing, you can do that. That's very helpful. Um, you can export this information. You can export practically every page uh, in the app. So the most popular one is Excel. And uh, you just click on that, it'll export it into Excel. You can print uh, practically every page in the app. Uh, you can format this 10 per page, 2550, all, however you want to do it. It's up to you. Uh, because it's a database driven system you can alpha sort the information as these lists get longer um, you want to see uh, as per coordinator uh, you want to see the care that's being given for this family you click on this link here um, you see the first name there's no last name here if you if you know that last name you can add that you just go right in uh, concern or celebration uh, you can update that per coordinator elder here's the notes uh, from you for the pastor you put your notes in there here's the board uh, our ministry or teams care notes um, if you uh, need to tweak it or edit it you can go in and do that um, if the discipleship ministry is done uh, working on this prayer uh, request and uh, maybe the Bible study ministry wants to, to take over it you can click on that and uh, update it you can switch it back anytime you want to if uh, it's not gonna it's gonna be open for a while you can put it on select so that everybody knows it's open for a while <clears throat> you can update any of the care notes you can uh, change any of the people who are um, helping out your role is a very uh, very important role uh, so you can see uh, the care notes you can also see the connectivity that we have with the person so again, there's their name, church status, concern, celebration, and then here is some of the connection points, phone, email, address, and then what are their connections with our members? Maybe you learn that uh, they are friends, uh, friends with uh, Kathy uh, Buckman, you know, who isn't, right? And uh, put that in there. Uh, occupation, you learn that they're a teacher. Um, these are all things that would be helpful for um, the people who are caring for these prayer requests to know. Um, so then they, they, they'll be able to have a better conversation with them. Um, and so these are the people that you are caring for, that, whose care you're coordinating. And then if you wanna see all the public prayers, you click on button number one. And this will show you all the public prayers and there's two different views you can do a view all which we'll look at in a second again you can have the filtered view where it breaks it out for you by members visitors community or others you have the same sort of functions again you can export you can do the keyword search you can print one of the neat things here is you can do a sort by dates of when the prayers were taken uh, this prayer database was built uh, last summer when we had a prayer ministry team come from st louis um, and we took 150 households shared prayer requests in the community there around the church in newark and um, so that's this is an actual database of actual work that's been done uh, so here's the prayer care coordinators um, you can alpha sort uh, any of these columns elders or deacons boards or ministries small groups individual prayer partners uh, here's their prayer care again that button take you into that screen this is nice when you're having uh, your elders or deacons uh, board, you know, meetings. Uh, you can uh, alpha sort and see who's doing what and then look at the care that's being provided and talk about it. Uh, and it's accessible 24-7, one of the most difficult things in ministry today with how busy everybody is to get physical meetings together with this uh, technology. You can have a virtual meeting 24-7 uh, ongoing. If you want a uh, screen that shows you just all of the prayers of the church at one shot uh, you can do that uh, in this way uh, this will if you want to know what their church status is uh, you can scroll through like that uh, community visitor others um, however you want to look at that their names their concerns or celebrations date phone email um, the prayer care that's being provided for them you can click on that that will take you into that screen as a prayer care coordinator you can delete any prayer request um, only you and the pastor have the authority to do that. So again, prayer care coordinators are very important within the uh, prayer ministry. Um, what you are doing with uh, your role is you are freeing up the pastor really to focus on his gift set and calling within the prayer ministry. Uh, only the pastor can override a prayer care coordinator's uh, decisions. So this is uh, all the prayers of the church, 
and um, we just want to go back. Uh, this is looking at it filtered out by member, visitor, and community. And then here is all the public prayers. That's button number one. If you want to add a public prayer, anybody can add a public prayer. That's button number two. And you go in there, you put the uh, name of the person you're praying for, their concern or celebration, your name, uh, your initial ministry notes, and then what's their church status. There's a drop-down menu. You pick whichever one that is. Put in uh, this information if you have it, if they want it shared. Any of the connection point information that you know. Um, you can choose... Uh, people to help out with these ministries just click on the drop down menus uh, and choose them uh, if you think they would be good fits they can also volunteer then click submit and a public prayer has been added um, people can also add confidential prayers if you had a confidential prayer this goes uh, only to the pastor and you put in the name of the person you're praying for it could be yourself it could be somebody else prayer request uh, address, information, church status, date, hit submit, and those prayer requests go only to uh, the pastor. So this is the prayers of the church. And then the uh, next button there is pretty neat. It is the uh, Google map of the prayer ministry. And so one of the functionalities of the uh, app is that you can uh, use Google maps. So in the area in Newark where I'm working there, um, the zip code is 07104. And so this is kind of cool. Um, this is again looking at the database of prayer requests that were collected last summer. We've been following up with since then. And um, there were a 150 households that shared prayer requests. And so, you know, as a missionary, I go down, I try to go down every Thursday. Uh, but, you know, I'm a network supported missionary. I'm called by the district to work with churches throughout the district as well as then I help churches outside of the district. So I'll, I'm not able to work full-time at this like when I was a church planter um, and so but be that as it may this is still very helpful even for somebody like me who can only put so many hours a week into this and you can see I've worked this list down to 67 my goal is to get the list down to zero because what I want to find out is who are the people who shared that shared prayer requests with us which of those people want to be interested in a community Bible study that we're starting uh, so this is kind of neat because um, it, you can just as you're going along you can see uh, the homes and where they are and you can see uh, the people's names and the prayer requests if you're coming in from out of the area you can click on directions and Google Maps will map you to uh, the location and um, as I mentioned we, we received 150 uh, prayer requests 150 households there in the community um, when I follow up with them it's very nice because I have this on my, uh, uh, my smartphone and so I just scroll down the screen and um, then when I, I come to the house, I just click on whichever pin this is, and it'll pull up their name. The prayer requests go up to the front door. Hi, my name's uh, Pastor Jim. Uh, we had people taking prayer requests here. We had a youth prayer team uh, taking prayer requests, and so-and-so prayed for such-and-such. -such. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, well, we prayed for you. How are you doing? They share the prayer requests. Uh, many times I've invited into the house. I have a discussion with them. And in the course of the conversation, uh, I'll let them know that we are starting a community Bible study. Is that something they'd be interested in? If they say yes, then what I do, the way I use this app in planting this new uh, outreach effort there in Newark is then I switch their rating over to visitor. And uh, by God's grace, there are 13 households um, that have uh, started coming to our uh, Bible classes, uh, Bible studies. And so these are households that we did not have relationships with prior to the uh, outreach and prior to using this app. And so uh, we praise God for this. So um, it's just it's just real handy uh, to uh, reach out to them. As you get to know their ad email addresses, you can also uh, email directly off of uh, the screen there. And, um, you know, that was one, one of the things also with uh, this, with the phone and the email. If you're using your smartphone, of course, you can call right off the screen uh, or email off the screen. If you're using your uh, desktop, laptop, tablet, you can email right off of the screen. So those are just some handy uh, pieces on that. So these are the prayers of the church. This is who we're praying for. And then this is our prayer ministry team as well as our, as our church members. So if you want to know about who is on the prayer ministry team, you click on this third button here. And then here are the different roles. We can have individual prayer partners, small groups, boards or ministries, elders or deacons, and then prayer ministry coordinators, which is uh, 
what uh, vi this video is focused on is for prayer ministry coordinators. And then we can also have church members. There will be uh, church members who want to uh, know about the prayer ministry of the church, uh, but not necessarily uh, sign up to help uh, specifically. One of the neat things uh, with this is then um, as people upload the uh, URLs, they use the URLs to upload their pictures, uh, to link their pictures, then you begin to get a, um, a virtual and real-time uh, church directory. Uh, so that's kind of cool too. Uh, so then here's the uh, prayer coordinator, so that's button number five. And uh, here are uh, some prayer coordinators uh, for this effort, uh, people within the congregation there and uh, emails, uh, phone number. So if you're on your smartphone, you can call directly off of it, email directly off of it on whatever device you're using. There's their address if you just want to get a quick look at what their address is. And then as they upload their pictures, and this is a newer feature actually uh, to the app, um, they can uh, put their pictures in. So that's pretty cool. Um, as a prayer coordinator, you can add another prayer coordinator. Uh, you just click on that button. It's real simple to add a prayer coordinator. Just put in their name. Uh, create a password for them. I, I suggest a very simple password. Use the number one or something like that. They can go in and change their password later and uh, then put their email address in, click submit, and it's just really that simple. Um, again, one of the things that you can do is you can do your keyword search. So right now, you know, your prayer coordinator list isn't that big, but you can do a keyword search. You can export, uh, you can print. Those are handy features if you're going to be somewhere that doesn't have Wi-Fi or you're going to be with somebody who doesn't use technology. Um, you can print these things out. So that's pretty handy. Uh, as a prayer coordinator, you can add uh, other prayer coordinators. You can add elders or deacons. So here's your elders or deacons list. And... Um, Obviously, there's some uh, fictitious names in here, Martin Luther and Francis Pieper, uh, and then somebody named Test Test. And uh, so, and then there's a picture that was uploaded. Uh, you want to add an elder or deacon, pretty simple. Uh, same thing, name, email, password, hit submit, and they're in. Um, you can, again, call or email directly off the list. You can do it with any of these. Uh, so you can do that for your boards or ministries, your small groups. So let's say you want to add a small group. Um, here's your small group li uh, list. You have your name of your group, your leader's name, phone, email, when, where we meet, uh, the prayer care. So this is kind of neat. So you can look and see what prayer care is this group providing. So here are the prayer requests that this group is following up with. And they don't have any updates yet. So obviously when you're... Uh, talking with these people uh, in this group, you can say, hey, where's your update and uh, what's going on? Uh, call, email. If you know there's uh, something that's been done or something needs to be tweaked in their report, you can click the edit button and uh, it will pull up their report and you can uh, uh, edit it accordingly. So um, these are the... Uh, Request that that group is following up with. Here's a list of all your groups. If you want to add a small group, you just click on the Add Small Group button. And uh, again, put the group, uh, leader's name, their pass email, uh, when we meet, where we meet, hit Submit. And uh, then that group has been added. Then um, if you want to, you can add individual prayer partners. Uh, again, same thing. Here's the individual prayer partners who are already in uh, the a church and uh, here's their phone numbers emails you can call or email directly off of that you can do a keyword search you can export you can print you can format it uh, the different ways you want to format you want to add an individual prayer partner it's pretty simple name email password click submit and uh, they are in so um, that's pretty simple you want to add a church member you can add a church member uh, get them uh, access to the prayer database. They can see the prayer request, who's following up with it. Again, very simple name, email, password, click submit, and uh, they are in. So these are your uh, prayer ministry team members and your church members. Um, we have Google Map functionality for them as well. So if we want to see you know, how do we get to the one of the elders' homes, uh, you type in the uh, zip code, hit search, and it will pull up the elders within five miles of this zip code. So that's maybe the church's zip code. Uh, you have a drop down menu. You can zoom it out to 100 miles if you want, whatever you want. There it is. Um, 
and then you want directions, you click on directions, and you're good. Uh, there's a, you know, it's Google Maps. You can do the satellite version if you want to do that. You can do the regular version, however you want to do it. Um, pretty simple. Church members, you know, gosh, it's kind of handy. You can use this right off your phone. Obviously not while you're driving, you know, um, but you put in the uh, zip code, do the search, it'll pull them up. Um, then you go down to the bottom down here, we have the Prairie Events calendar. This is kind of neat. Uh, you can create an, any event uh, for the church as a prayer coordinator. Uh, so you just type in uh, what the event is that you are inviting people to. So let's just say it's the uh, barbecue uh, and then when uh, it starts, when it ends, uh, who's the leader. And so we'll, put, we'll say uh, Colonel uh, Sanders is the leader of the barbecue. And what's his email? It's CS uh, Turkey. At gmail.com, uh, obviously a fictitious uh, email address. Uh, fill in the phone number, click submit. Up comes the calendar, and uh, there you go. There's the barbecue, and uh, you can edit it, uh, you can delete it. One of the neat things you can also do with it is you can just click it and drag it and move it to another location on the uh, calendar. Uh, you want to see the month at a glance, click month. You want to see the next month at a glance, click the next month, the next month, the next month. You want to go back to today, click the today button. Um, there's something you want to print, click the print. Uh, you can do it right for the month, you can do it for the week, you can do it for the day. Um, so however you want to do it. It's, uh, it's just pretty simple. It's just uh, technology uh, to help our prayer ministry. And uh, then you want to see the information on the church. Um, you go right there and... Uh, there's a picture of your church and church name, address, website. You know, um, uh, I mentioned this before. If your church doesn't have a website, just use the denominational website. You put your church's Facebook page, phone number, worship times. There's your pastor's name, phone number, email, um, all that information. And then we'll just end up where we started, which is on your button there. You can go in here and change this information as much as you need to uh, anytime you want to. So that's really what this is all about. Um, you know, and I just want to point out again that the prayer app is about more than just helping your church. It's about helping the church be the church wherever you are. So we want to encourage all of our church members to uh, have this downloaded uh, onto their laptops, computers, desktops, uh, or have it uh, saved to their home screen on their smartphone. And... Uh, because you never know when they're going to have a chance to take a prayer request for somebody. And, you know, if you're, uh, if you're out somewhere, you know, all you do is click on the prayer request button. And then when that loads up, um, you want to put a prayer request in for somebody. It will ask you what the zip code is uh, for uh, the church. And you'll put the zip code in. So, for example, we could put 07104 and search. And you can do this anywhere. And so there's Redeemer House Church. And you want to put a prayer request in, just click on Share Your Prayer. Uh, here's information about the church. They can see, anybody can see, there's the, the picture of the church we looked at before. Put the prayer request in with that button. Name the person's request. What's the request? Phone, address, if they want to share that. What's the relationship with the church? Drop down menu, click Submit. And you can put a prayer request in for a church anywhere. I've been blessed uh, to be able to do that for people. Uh, all across the country. And so I just praise God for that. Pray God's richest blessings on you and on your ministry.